right. So, in several applications we demand uh, concrete to have weights that are not normal that is not 2400 because we need specific properties like insulation with lightweight concrete or radiation shielding with heavyweight concrete ok. So, in such applications we have to deal with densities that are not exactly at 2400. So, normal concrete we typically say 2400 is the density lightweight which is typically less than 1800 kilograms per cubic meter density okay. and heavyweight is generally more than 3000 kilogram per cubic meter although technically anything more than 2500, 2600 could be termed as lightweight sorry heavyweight, but in most instances this is more than 3000 kilogram per cubic meter. Now, how do you make concrete change weight? the maximum proportion of material inside the concrete belongs to aggregate. So, by making aggregates lightweight or heavyweight is the easiest way that you can change the density of the concrete ok. Alternatively, if you want to make concrete lightweight, you can also introduce more air in the system. We already know about air entrained concrete, but air entrained concrete has an air content of only about 5 to 8 percent only about 5 to 8 percent at that air content your density is not going to reduce to much lower than 2200. So, it does not qualify as lightweight concrete, it is still a normal concrete, normal air entrained concrete, but lightweight means you are less than 1800. So, you introduce much more air as compared to that ok. Commonly today we are using products like aerated concrete right. We also call aerated concrete as cellular concrete, lot of large air pockets are put inside the system. We can also use foam like your shampoo generates foam, we can have foaming agents that generate similar foam. This foam is mixed with cement paste or cement mortar and the structure of air is maintained once the hardening of the cement paste or mortar happens. So, that is essentially to get lightweight systems, but as far as heavyweight concrete is concerned the only option is to change the aggregate phase. You cannot really do anything to the cement paste to make it heavyweight you can make it lightweight, but you cannot make it heavyweight. So, as far as lightweight aggregates are concerned, we have uh, pyroclastic volcanic rocks, pyroclastics are those rocks which are formed by fusion of the ashes that come out of the volcanic eruption. So, in a volcanic eruption there are three types of rocks formed right, one is called intrusive igneous rock which is formed under the surface of the crust earth's crust where cooling happens very slowly and the uh, rock forms crystal sizes which are quite large. Then cooling can happen on the surface of the earth and we make what is known, known as extrusive igneous rocks ok. In such cases like basalt the particle sizes are small because the cooling is happening rather rapidly, the crystals do not get a long enough time to develop. So, particle sizes are small. And you have the ashes that are the lightweight components that get spewed out in the case of volcanic eruption. These ashes can get cemented together and form what we call as pyroclastics right. So, like lightweight aggregates like pumice or breccia, so several types of lightweight aggregate can form because of the fusion of these ashes. Again ashes are silica right. So, this silica fusion of that silica basically leads to formation of pyroclastic rocks. Now, you can also have manufactured lightweight aggregate which we will talk about also later like expanded clay or shale. That means, you are you take advantage of the layered structure of these materials and sort of puff them up that is what you call as expanded clay or expanded shale or sintered fly ash. We talked about this previously, the particles of fly ash can be pelletized made to stick together. So, that they form aggregate size particles and then sintered or burnt at high temperature just like what we do for bricks. So, same thing happens with fly ash, the silica and alumina present. So, sintering leads to the formation of a hard bond right and that leads to formation of lightweight aggregate, artificial lightweight aggregate. Heavyweight aggregates are essentially those which contain iron mostly like barite, ilmenite uh, sorry uh, barite is barium sulphate which is also heavyweight, but Ilmenite, hematite, uh, magnetite and so on are actual iron bearing heavyweight aggregates. Steel can also be used as an aggregate. How? 
you take a reinforcing bar, cut into aggregate size, put into concrete, it becomes a heavyweight aggregate, right. If you want extremely high densities in concrete, that is what they do. They use steel. We call it use of steel punchings. Basically, you are cutting out reinforcement to the size of aggregate, okay. So, lightweight aggregate concrete can be used of course for several purposes or lightweight concrete can be used for several purposes. For structural purposes, we have to use densities which are on the higher side, otherwise we will not be able to make concrete that is strong enough, okay. But for masonry units, for lightweight blocks for instance, you can make densities of 800 to 1400 and when you are trying to get only insulation as a function from lightweight materials you can go for densities even lower than 800 kilogram per cubic meter, right. So, lightweight for concrete masonry units, this is what we typically design with aerated blocks and foamed concrete blocks. What is the advantage of using these blocks over bricks? Why do I want to, why today's construction, why do we see more aerated blocks than bricks? Sorry? more, more uniformity uh, compared to bricks, okay, maybe because these are industry processed, yeah, bricks can come out of, uh, uh, I mean, more economical from what perspective? The material may not be more economical, larger size, you need lesser blocks, but economy comes primarily from productivity, productivity, right. Here, one block is almost equal to 8 bricks in volume. So, where you are spending time placing 8 bricks and putting mortar in between, you are putting 1 block. So, productivity increases tremendously and for the loads that are required for infill walls and partition walls, your aerated blocks or foam blocks are good enough. You do not need high quality bricks in this purpose. Right? And secondly, of course, econ uh, the sustainability wise also you can do a lot more with concrete than you can do with red brick. If you are using red soil, I mean, top soil for brick making, that is not really a good sustainable practice because top soil is useful for agriculture, right. Now, depending upon what you do to attain lightweight, either aggregates or foaming or aeration, the densities will differ. Generally, when you are going towards these systems, they are foamed or aerated. But here primarily it is lightweight aggregate concrete, LWAC, lightweight aggregate concrete, which is on the higher density side. For insulation purposes, you will not really go with aggregates unless you have aggregates that have very low density also. So, that is possible, you can still do it, you can still make concrete with less density than water. Uh, we had previously uh, made concrete with 800 to 900 density for the construction of a concrete canoe. We in fact even, even had a competition at IIT Madras in 2016, yeah 2016, we had called teams from outside also to make their own concrete canoes and race it. In, in uh, Of course, we could not race more than one canoe at one time because we were using the towing tank in the hydraulics lab, which had only a limited length and limited width. Now, it is not there now, it will be there in the new uh, academic complex to NEC2, okay. Anyway, I do not know if they will permit us to use it for concrete canoe races again, but uh, this is a very popular competition in the US. It happens every year, concrete canoe competition. So, regularly utilized material for this is lightweight concrete and they typically use lightweight aggregate in this competition. Mm -hmm.